Hello and welcome back to We Are The Bakers. Today we are at Quarry Bank Mill up near Manchester. It was built in 1784 and it is now one of the best preserved cotton mill factories in the UK. We're gonna look at how the cotton was made, turned into the fabrics what we have today. We're gonna to spend some time in the apprentice house where we get to learn about the young children which were sent to work in the factory at an age as young as eight, which is only Freya's age. So I think you better pull your finger out a little bit. So you'll see a bit more about this a bit later. But this is about the child workforce. So children as young as you, Freya, were working in the factory. How? Well, they would have been getting under the machinery, they would have been fixing things which broke, they would be cleaning messes. What's funny is these have actually got all the fingers. Because you'll find a lot of children lost fingers in accidents. See the machines down there in action. Look at all these cotton fibres here, Freya. This is the kind of machinery which was powered by the mill. Well, you they do look a bit like spider webs, yes, you're right. This was all powered by the water mill, which was used first. It was a big 32 foot wide water mill. And then uh, they actually ended up upgrading that to a steam engine in the early 1800s. Um, oh, it's like a sausage. <laughs> a cotton sausage. So you take those home with you, that's oh, really wow. soft, and that's because that's all being cleaned. What, what this okay. machine is doing is using all of these brushes along the top here and cleaning out all of those bits of cotton seed and all that plant matter. Uh, and then what it keeps is what you have in your hands, that really clean cotton, that sort of cotton sliver. Now a few hundred years ago, once those cans were all completely filled up, it would be the job of children, a little bit older than you guys maybe, you'd be nine years old, and your job would be to come along, pick up that can once it was full of cotton, and carry it over onto the next machine. And if you're doing that 12 hours a day, six days a week, pretty tiring work, they're very heavy when they're full, uh, and you'd probably be carrying two at a time, one in each hand. So what we'll do is we'll uh, give the, the next machines in the process a run for you. So you can see here at the back, we've got that can of cotton here, that very thick cotton that's been carried over. And at the front, what's coming out is quite a bit smaller, and that's because of all of the rollers. So these are called grafting rollers, and they're pulling that cotton through, making it a lot smaller, really flat, really fragile. And these arms here will then turn around to add in a little bit of a twist make it that little bit stronger so it doesn't break. Imagine that Freya, all day, every day, for 12 hours. Even louder! Even louder, loads of these machines going off and off and off. Be really scary. You don't like noise. Well, now we don't. You've done too well in the mill, would you? Good job you got a few more years to get used to the noise. So once all of those bobbins are full, it'll be the job of children. Again, those nine-year-old children to do something called doffing, and that is to remove those bobbins. This is the weaving part, Freya. So this is where they take all that cotton and they turn it into the fabric here. You can see all the pulleys spinning round, powering all the belts, which is then powering the machine. Below here, there would be the mill, and the mill is spinning that, and that then is using the cogs above, is powering all this machinery. No electricity, you'll get to see the mill outside. I thought water just kept you hydrated. Yeah, kept people working, that's what he did. Okay, so that water down there is powering this, which is spinning, and it's also spinning this. And this was upstairs. You know when we saw it moving upstairs, powering all the equipment? All the clogs upstairs. In the weaving room, this, is that pole going straight up through the ceiling. Oh, wow. That's doing all that machinery upstairs, just this. So today is quite a cool day in the UK. We're talking about seven, eight degrees inside the factory at the moment it is so warm now can you imagine Freya what how warm that would have been working here up and down up and down carrying cotton all day so, so here you can see the size of the water mill huge that's got to be over over 20 foot wide does it 
<laughs> so if you wait for your head through there. <laughs> so this is what we've just seen from the outside. And if you look, if you look at it, it looks like it's moving really slowly, doesn't it, Freya? But if you look at the up here, it's how fast that's spinning. That doesn't like to go as fast as that, and that's because a very clever set of gears and cogs means that can go slowly, but spin that really fast, and that's how the kids sleep powering full, full mill. I feel like we're on X. It does this is a bit like X, isn't it? Also, this used to have a wheel in as well, Freya. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can see the water coming in, and this would have been where it spins the wheel around. What? Was this where the old steam engines would have been then? This is the steam. This, was this the original steam engine? Yeah, oh wow, so that's the original steam engine, Freya. Right. And it was a backup to the original water wheel. So there was the yes. Yeah. So in case you didn't catch it, so what that gent was saying to us is this area here, this used to be the original water mill, which was made out of wood. Um, and water was free, so this is what they used all the time. But then they had the steam engine as the backup to help power the mill when needed. Have you ever seen our boiler? Uh, that's the little tiny combi boiler we've got. This is their original water boiler. So this is where the water is heated up, boiled, turned into steam, steam turns wheels. That's the original what? The original slide. <laughs> That's Samuel Gregg's house. We're going to go in there in a second. Now, why do you think he lives so close to the factory? Because he worked at the factory? Not just because he worked at the factory. Well, do you hear how noisy it was inside the factory? Right? <laughs> he could hear that from his house. So if he went quiet, yeah. he knew there was a problem and he can go straight from his house, straight across into the mill to see what was going on. So, before you go in, that's it. I just And then we go. Ooh, mum, you look very nice there. Ooh, yeah. the Welcome to MTV Cribs. Okay, so unfortunately we were asked not to upload any footage from inside the house due to copyright reasons. So out of respect, we shall move on. If it is that you are enjoying this video, go ahead, do it that subscribe button. It really does help us out. We're looking to get to a thousand subscribers as quick as we can. So please go ahead, subscribe to see more content like this. So now we are going to the apprentice house where children were brought at the ages of eight or nine up to around 21 where they would have been set to work to learn the trade to work in the, the mill. Now some of these children will come from poor homes and as far as, as London where these children would have been taken away from the parents as uh, society felt they were better being in work than actually with their parents who were quite poor. Now how would you feel about that Freya? Been taken away from your parents because they were poor. That would be amazing. Oh, bell's ringing. Time for work, Freya. So, Freya, this is literally your, would have been your school. Working, living in here, going down to the mill every day, 13 hours a day. This house is about 300 years old, I think. Three little ones. Which room do you think we're in? Yes, go on. The kitchen. The kitchen, right. Food you would have eaten. Crusty bread, porridge. Vegetables though. Oh. Yeah, it's good that they got to eat lots of vegetables though. Because, like I say, if you lived in the city, you wouldn't have access to fresh veg like that all the time. And this is all the bowls and the plates where all these little kids would have had. Up to wooden ones, up to 90 at a time. Can you believe that? There's so many. And here, you can see. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Some lovely. Uh, Benjamin. You know what? You have to be careful when eating rabbits. Sometimes it has a hair. I'm going to tell you about Joseph Sexton and Thomas Creasy. They came up from the Hackney Workhouse in London. Um, Joseph was about 13 when he came. Thomas was about 11. They've been here a couple of years. Right. Thomas Creasy was working down at the mill one day. Yeah, this got down there. I don't think he was paying attention. Next time he looked down. Can I told you about the fingers, didn't I, Fred? Oh dear me! So he's fingerless! Used to sleep, Fred, two per bed. So these. I would have slept with the Yeah, so these four beds used to have two per bed. Not very big, are they? 
So you slept in that area whether you were nine or 21. Like, not very big, are you? are hanging over the edge. Does your school like this, Sophie? Yeah, you used them at the Black, Black Country Museum once. Did they? This will be chalk. Chalk and a blackboard. Can you turn nine, Freya? You're up here. What did you think of it, Freya? It was good. Good. It was interesting learning about how the. Uh, what kind of life all them children had, isn't it? And that is us here done at Quarry Bank. We're here down by the side of the river. We've learnt about what it was like to be an apprentice at the age of nine. And we've seen how the cotton was made inside. If you are into videos such as this, check out this video up here, which is when we visit the village of Eam, which was ravaged by the plague in 1665. Or check out this video here, which YouTube believes is the best one for you. See you next time. Goodbye, Freya.